suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl. That's the classic formula for a Hollywood love story. But it will not suffice for a suspense story. We need other elements to thicken the plot and chill the blood. Elements such as a deserted shanty in the high Rockies, a cloudburst, and a pitchfork murderer. Such ornaments we have placed on the bare branches of the Boy Meets Girl plot with results which we hope will keep you in suspense. Listen, listen then as Miss Vanessa Brown stars with Jim Amici in A Fair at Loveland Pass, which begins in exactly one minute. Memo on medals. Information about our military awards and decorations. Service medals are given for honorable performance by military personnel in specified geographical areas between specified dates. Unit decorations are those awarded to sighted units of the armed forces for exceptional performance in armed conflict. In most cases, they are worn centered immediately above the right breast pocket, while individual decorations and service medals are worn over the left breast pocket. Many American awards and decorations may be presented to people of other countries, but not the Purple Heart. This distinguished and cherished medal was first conceived by George Washington during the Revolutionary War, the purpose being to demonstrate, in his own words, that the road to glory in a patriot army and free country is open to all. Awarding of the Purple Heart was discontinued after the Revolutionary War until it was revived in 1932 as a memorial to our first president on the occasion of the 200th anniversary of his birth. As recognition for special acts of public service, medals are among the most coveted of all awards. And now. Fair at Loveland Pass, starring Vanessa Brown with Jim Amici. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Now, I'm not exactly what you could call a rugged outdoor type. But when an old college classmate of mine invited me to spend my vacation with him on a packed trip in the Rockies, it sounded like fun. So I stocked up on camping equipment at Abercrombie & Fitch in New York and headed west. Five days later, I was climbing through the pines and aspens of Loveland Pass, west of Denver. I was above Timberline when I rounded a curve, and there in front of me was a parked car and the figure beside it waving frantically. I had been warned by the auto club not to pick up hitchhikers or stop for strangers, and I was about to drive right on by when I noticed that it was a girl, a very pretty girl, and she seemed to be very frightened. So against my better judgment, I stopped. Hello, what's the matter? Oh, thank heavens you came by. Oh, I'm so scared. What's the matter? I don't know, my car won't go. I've been sitting here for nearly an hour. It's the first car that's come through. Yes, this is a pretty lonely road. I was listening to the radio about that murderer. The uh, fellow with the pitchfork? Yes. How did you know? I heard about him down in Idaho Springs. They have a real wild west posse looking for him. Cowboys on horses. <laughs> They'll never catch him. The radio says he stole a car. I was afraid when you came along you might be him. And then I saw your New York license plates. He stole a car with Wyoming plates. A 53 Mercury Coupe. Well, you have nothing to fear. This is not a Mercury, and as you yourself have noticed, the license plate's in New York. Yes. Are you from New York? Yes. New York City? Manhattan Island, right in the middle, 55th and Park. Gee. I always wanted to see New York. It's quite a town. Bet it is. Now, what's the matter with your car? I don't know. Just stopped. I don't know the first thing about automobiles. Neither did I, but somehow I didn't want to admit it to her. Because, well, she was so pretty. So I tried the starter and checked the gas and examined the instruments. And then I raised the hood 
and fumbled around tapping things here and there in the maze of wires and coils and gadgets. And then I stepped on the starter again, and of course nothing happened. And I realized that all I was accomplishing was running the battery down. Finally, I gave up. No? No. I'm afraid it's beyond me. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, you can't sit here, that's for sure. It'll be dark in a little while. I think you'd better come along with me. With you? Where? To the next town. We'll find a mechanic there. How far is that? Well, let's take a look at the map. Let's see. Next town's Dillon. Doesn't look very big from the size of the type. How far is it? About 25 miles. We've got Loveland passed across before we get there nearly 12,000 feet. So we better get started. Do you, uh, well, do you think it'll be safe? The car? You can lock it. It's a cinch. Nobody can move it. I wasn't thinking of the car. Don't worry about my driving. I'm a very cautious driver. Well, that wasn't exactly... Listen, what... my dear young lady, it's getting late, and if you prefer, I'll be on my way, and you can sit here in the dark all well, night long. I, I, I didn't quite mean... It's that... up to you. I guess I haven't much choice, have I? It's up to you. I don't want to force your decision. I'll, uh... I'll go with you. <laughs> In a moment, we continue with the second act of Suspense. A couple of thousand years ago, the ancient sage Diogenes remarked that all things are in common among friends. Well, he didn't mean that only material goods were in common among friends, but that they shared their troubles as well. For a long time, the United States Armed Forces have been a friend in time of need during fires, floods, and pestilence all over the world. Many peoples of the earth have come to believe in the friendship which the U.S. military personnel have spread for so many years, and the calls for help they answer in time of personal emergency, a response which has always been immediate. Not long ago, a Korean Buddhist nun was suffering from beriberi, an advanced form of acute malnutrition. But she was living in an isolated monastery deep in the Korean hills and valleys. Her sister nuns contacted the nearest Army Signal Corps relay station, and wheels began turning. In no time, an Army helicopter landed at the station's helipad. American soldiers carried the stricken nun to the copter. She was flown to a waiting ambulance and whisked away to the hospital. Her recovery was rapid. Thanks to the United States Army, her newfound friends. Army helicopter men helped in many other ways. Over the 108 islands of the Ryukyus that spread from southern Japan to northern Formosa, Army helicopters are constantly whirling their blades as they hop from one island to another on missions of mercy. They bring food donated by American women on Okinawa, or they bring vital medicine to save a life. They also bring friendship and understanding and freedom, the right of all men everywhere. And now, starring Vanessa Brown with Jim Amici, act two of Affair at Loveland Pass. right. About what? You're driving. I feel perfectly safe with you. Thank you. What's your name? Stanley. Stanley Dorrance. What's yours? Pauline Weatherby. People call me Polly. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Polly. Thank you, Stanley. My friends call me Stan. I'm glad to meet you too, Stan. And what were you doing up here in the mountains all alone? Well... I came out from Chicago with a girlfriend to take an art course in Colorado Springs. And we wanted to see some of the scenery before we went home. What happened to the girlfriend? The day before summer school was over, she she got word her mother was sick. She had to go back to Chicago by train. And you decided to see the scenery all by yourself? Yes. Gee, it's scary. What, the scenery? 
No, the scenery's beautiful, but when something happens to your car, that's scary. Sure it is. Where are you going? Durango. I'm supposed to go on a pack trip with some friends. Uh-oh. What's the matter? It's beginning to rain. Oh, it was probably just a summer shower. Well, this is just silly. This is no summer shower. It's a cloudburst. Why are you stopping? I can't see to drive. I am sorry. For what? Well, if I hadn't stopped you back there, you'd be over the pass by now, sitting in a nice dry hotel somewhere. And where would you be? Sitting in the rain all alone and probably scared to death. It's better this way. You know, you're a very nice man. Thank you. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't come along. Yeah. Hey, well, what do you know? What? Off to the side of the road, a shanty. Where? Where will I train this spotlight on it? There. Oh, yeah. Hey, maybe the people let us in till the rain stops. Huh? I doubt it. Why? Because there's nobody there. Well, how do you know? Look at it. Windows broken, door wide open. It's deserted. Oh. But I'll bet it'll be drier than this car. Here, wrap my coat around you and we'll make a dash for it. Do you think it's safe? Sure, why not? Well, I don't know. It's scary. It's also dry. Come on. Yeah, there we are. How about this? Not a leak. Oh, scary. Oh, Polly, everything's scary to you. Here, I'll flash the light around. See? Nothing to be scared of. Fireplace, broken down chair, rickety table. Regular little gray home of the West. <gasps> oh, it's there, Luke. What? Those eyes over there, it's a wildcat. Where? <gasps> oh, silly, it's only a rat. <gasps> Not a sewer rat, a pack rat. Haven't you ever heard of pack rats? No. They're quite harmless. He's much more frightened of us than we are of him. How do you know? I read it in a book. Oh. Hungry? A little. Well, I think it's time we had some dinner. Dinner? Where? Right here. What are we going to eat? Pack rats? <laughs> no, I've got some canned goods out in the car and some other stuff. We can be quite comfortable here. All night? Well, until the rain stops, you wait here. Wait here? Alone? All right, then. You keep the flashlight. I'll be right back. It took me two trips back to the car to unload the gear, and I couldn't admit to Polly how desperately I needed the flashlight. For those two trips in the pounding rain were not only the wettest, but the longest I've ever made in my life. I was sure there was a vicious wild animal hiding behind every tree ready to pounce on me. I couldn't let on to Polly. After all, she was more scared than I was, if that were possible. Hey, on, now. First, we'll get a little light on the subject. There. Oh, a gasoline lantern. Oh, how wonderful. Now, a little music. Oh, no, don't tell me. You got a radio? Yep. Battery job for occasions like oh. this. Police have erected roadblocks throughout five Listen. states in an effort to apprehend Big Red, who this afternoon pitchforked and killed a foreman at the Lazy R Ranch near Bailey. The search of a mounted sheriff's posse was discontinued late today when it was learned that the killer had stolen a 1953 Mercury Coupe with Wyoming license plates. We return you now to our regularly scheduled program. <gasps> Stan, what if he took this road? What if he did? Well, he might murder us. What for? He doesn't even know us. No, Polly, if this character has any sense, he'll head for the nearest big city. In this case, Denver, ditch that hot car and lose himself along Skid Row. Are you sure? Sure, that's what I'd do if I were a murderer. Are you? Really, now? Uh, no, I'm sorry. If you've got any doubts about me, you're free to leave. In this rain? We are sort of stuck with each other, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. All right, then, stop worrying. What do you have for dinner? Beans or beans? Beans will be fine. You gonna cook them in the fireplace? Nope. We'll have a fire for aesthetic purposes, but the beans will cook quicker on this little primus stove. Oh, what a man. You got everything. Thank you. In the way of camping equipment, I mean. That's what I thought you meant.
Or coffee? No, thanks. Oh, it was a wonderful meal, Stan. I don't know when anything's tasted so good. Mountaineer, you were hungry. <laughs> That's funny. What? I'm a city girl. The biggest place out of doors that I know anything about is Lincoln Park in Chicago. I get jittery when I'm not walking on a concrete sidewalk within earshot of a traffic jam. Here I am in the middle of the Rocky Mountains, sitting in the firelight with a man I've only met a couple of hours ago, and somehow it seems to be all right. Of course it's all right. And in any case, it's a situation we've got to make the best of. What are you doing? Setting up the cot. What for? You. You mean we are going to spend the night here? Looks like we'll have to. Now look here, Stan. Don't get any ideas of... Oh, I... for heaven's sake, Polly. Don't you get any ideas. There we are. Now a nice eider down sleeping bag on top of the cot and you'll be as snug as a bug in a rug. I don't think this looks quite right. Who's watching? Where will you sleep? I'll just curl up here on the floor. Look, you won't get any rest sleeping on that hard floor. I think we ought to go on. Polly, we can't go on until the rain stops, and we might as well be comfortable. Now crawl in and get some sleep. Better take off your shoes. But that's all. Of course that's all. Now crawl in. Well, all right. Comfortable? Yes, thanks. And you? Just great. Stan? Yes? Have you got a gun? What for? Wild animals. No, silly. Well, what will you do if a bear comes sniffing around? He won't. How do you know? This country's too civilized nowadays. Why, they even have a television tower on Lookout Mountain where Buffalo Bill is buried. Oh. Stan? Yeah? I'm not scared anymore, even in the dark. That's good. You know why? Why? Because you're here, and I think you're the bravest man I ever met. Go to sleep. Sleep? I couldn't sleep. I was terrified lying there on the floor of that cabin, listening to the rain pounding on the roof. I was uncomfortable and cold, and I thought morning had never come. But I must have dozed off sometime, because I was rudely and abruptly awakened by the hideous <laughs> scream of a mountain lion pouncing on me. In just a moment, we continue with the third act of... Suspense. How does our nation honor heroism? One way is to award the Soldier's Medal, a bronze octagon on which is displayed an eagle standing between two groups of stars. The medal is suspended from a blue ribbon with 13 narrow stripes in the center, seven white and six red. One of the newest and least known of all the American decorations, the Soldier's Medal, authorized in 1926, is bestowed for heroism not involving actual conflict with an armed enemy. There are many forms of gallantry in addition to those demonstrated in battle. The Soldier's Medal was conceived to honor those soldiers who, in non-combat situations, perform bravely and at great peril to themselves, men who serve as an inspiration to others. The Soldier's Medal holds an important place among America's awards for heroism. And now... Starring Vanessa Brown with Jim Amici, Act Three of Affair at Loveland Pass. I was sure I was being attacked by a mountain lion until I realized that it was fully clothed. It was Polly who had screamed and thrown herself on the floor by my side. <laughs> Stan. What's the matter? Outside, there's something outside. A bear or something. Oh, stop being silly. There aren't any bears in these mountains. Listen. Listen. It's probably just our friend, the pack rat. It sounds it... bigger. Well, the rain stopped and the moon's out. I'll take a look. Be careful. Hey, Polly. 
Out here on the road. There's a car parked behind mine, and somebody's got my hood up. You stay here. I'm going to find out what's going on. I'm going with you. All right, but stay behind me. This may mean trouble. You'll be able to handle it, I know. Come on. Hey, you. What's the big idea? Huh? What's the big idea, I said? This your car? Yes. Got the keys? Yes. Hand them over. What for? I'm borrowing this seat. I was just trying to bypass ignition, but since you got the keys, you'll save me the trouble. Now hand them over. Stanley's got a gun. Hey, well, what a break. A traveling companion. Dad. Get in, sister. You and me are taking a ride. You'll be nice window dressing in case anybody asks questions. Stan! Get in, baby, Stan! now! Stan! Do as Big Red should. Didn't you notice, Polly, that car, 1953 Mercury, Wyoming plates? Oh. I thought your specialty was pitchforks, Red. Seems your specialty is talking too much. Where'd you get the gun? That ain't as important as what I'm going to do with it. I'll give you one more chance to hand over them keys, and if you ain't quick about it, I'll take them off your dead body. What good will that do you? You'll never get through the roadblocks. I'll worry about that. You can't burn any hotter for two murders than you can for one. Now, if you don't hand over them keys when I count to three. One, two, three. Polly, bullseye. Where'd you get that piece of firewood you caught them with? Had it with me all the time. All the time? Mm-hmm. I took it to bed with me. Why? For protection. Well, you two young people are to be congratulated. Thank you, Sheriff, but it's really Polly who should get the credit. He'd have plugged me if she hadn't cocked him on the noggin. Still, it takes a lot of courage to stand up before a dangerous killer like you did. That's not all, Sheriff. You should have seen him in that cabin. He went right off to sleep on that hardwood floor without a thought for mountain lions or bears or anything. Oh, well, I, I tried to explain to her, Sheriff, that there aren't any wild animals in these mountains anymore. What? Well, there aren't, are there? Why, the bears come down and raid our garbage cans almost every night. They're a pesky nuisance. And up there near that shack where you were, my deputy Luke Johnson shot a 150-pound cat just last week. Uh, Sheriff, I, I wonder if you could get me a glass of water. Uh, I feel a little... Why, sure, you just sit there quiet. I'll be right back. <laughs> What? What's so funny? Well, then... Then you were scared, huh? Just a little bit? Terrified. Every minute. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you're human. Suspense. In which Vanessa Brown starred with Jim Amici in Affair at Loveland Pass. Written, produced, and directed by William N. Robeson. Supporting Miss Brown and Mr. Amici in Affair at Loveland Pass were Barney Phillips and Jim Nusser. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Miss Frances Farmer and Miss Kathy Lewis in The Sisters. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Suspense has been brought to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Music